Today we're looking at core watercolors and we are looking at the tube versions. I've done some videos using core watercolors in the past and March's watercolor snacks came with the high chroma set. This is my own personal set that I've had for a while. And what I want to do is I want to test comparatively how four watercolors perform as two watercolors versus how they perform as half pans that have been dried out. So I have here a Hanbei 12 pan set with 12 half pans. And I've also got some additional half pans since I have 14 colors that I'm going to want to put in tubes. All right. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and get organized, grab all the colors that I want to test. I will not be testing iridescent silver since these tend not to reconstitute very well. I will be taking a look at Permanent Gamboge, Burnt Umber Natural, French Ultramarine Blue, Prussian Blue, Cerulean Blue Chromium, or Chromium Cerulean Blue, ugh, Cerulean Blue, Quinacridone Crimson, Bohemian Green Earth, Thalo, blue, uh, Thalo Green Blue Shade, and then the high chroma colors, Cobalt Teal, Dioxazine Purple, Transparent Pyrrole Orange, Quinacridone Gold, Green Gold, and Quinacridone Magenta. So in total, we have six, five, so that's 11, 14 colors, and I've got 14 half pans. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a dot test and wash that out with water. Next, we're gonna work through the colors that I've picked up open stock. The open stock colors tend to be a little larger than those set sold in sort of the sample sets. I'm trying to find the size here, 11 milliliters versus five milliliters. So from left to right, we have Quinn Magenta, Quinn Gold, Transparent Pyro Orange, Green Gold, Dioxine Purple, Cobalt Teal, and now permanent gamboge. Something I'm particularly interested in experimenting with and seeing for myself is that core watercolors, the blues are supposed to be particularly good because instead of using gum arabic, which as you can see is already kind of yellow, it uses aquazole, which is transparent. So supposedly core watercolors have some of the best blues available in watercolor because they don't have that uh, gum arabic binder and i would love to do a one-to-one -one sort of test in the future between brands that use gum arabic as their binder and brands like core and core might actually be the only brand that use aquazole as their binder just to see how that swatches out and how the colors look now with gum arabic it's not going to get more yellow over time it just starts out incredibly yellow so from left to right, we have Quinn Magenta, Quinn Gold, Transparent Pyrrole Orange, Green Gold, Dioxine Purple, Cobalt Teal, Permanent Gamboge, Burnt Umber Natural, Cerulean Blue, French Ultramarine, and this one actually seems to have a lot of aquazole, Prussian Blue, Quinn Crimson, Bohemian Earth, Green Earth, and Thalo Green Blue Shade. So I'm gonna go get a clean cup of water and we're gonna get to swatching. Now, our next step is to take, ha, 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 we're gonna want a waterproof pen. And I wanna remove any of the excess paint smutzes from the surface of the paper, because those are gonna activate once this gets wet. And we're gonna do a little bit of a transparency test. Give that a couple minutes to dry. Next, I'm gonna do a couple of different types of swatches. I'm gonna do a gradiated swatch. And then using the remainder of the paint, I'm going to do a mass tone swatch. 
and I apologize in advance if this lighting setup is a little bit weird. We've been experimenting with improving our lighting, but we haven't completely nailed it. So this is a bit of a work in progress. And what's really nice about the core high chroma watercolors is that they're all very vivid, brilliant colors. However, I would not recommend them as a starter set or as a mixing set because they can be somewhat challenging colors to use and somewhat challenging colors to mix to get what you want. And within my core collection, I don't necessarily have, other than the Quinn Crimson, I don't really have any reds. Although I think between the Quinn Magenta and the Quinn Crimson, we've probably got those bases co covered. I also, um, I only have the Phthalo Green Blue Shade, which is a good cool green. I don't have a warmer green other than Bohemian Earth which is um, more of a neutral green. So when I put together this collection of colors, it was more to sort of bridge the gaps in my existing watercolor collection rather than to serve as a mixing set. So when I was purchasing colors, I aimed for things I didn't already own for the most part or things I felt were just slightly different using the Aquazole binder or using core pigments. And once I finish swatching this, I can read the pigments out to you guys. And for disclosure, I am using fluid cellulose watercolor paper to do this swatch test. I have found that with higher quality watercolors, they really do benefit from at least testing on higher quality papers because the quality difference can just really be quite significant. However, I do frequently paint with cellulose-based papers, especially when I'm working on my comic, 7-inch Kara. So for me, it's important to see how watercolors handle on a variety of papers. And you can get core watercolors almost anywhere at this point. Most many mom and pop art supply shops will probably carry them. You can get them at Jerry's Artorama. You can get them at Dick Blick. You can get them at Plaza, I believe. It's been a little while since I've been to Plaza though, so don't take my word for it. Check your, for yourself and you can get them on Amazon and you can check the description below for links for all of that. And for brand name watercolors that kind of everybody carries, I think it really checks to a comparison shop or wait for a sale. So that is that Bohemian Green Earth and definitely a lot of brown to it, but it's very transparent for an earth color. And it definitely straddles that brown green line. Be perfect for painting Louisiana swamps. It's exactly the color I think of. And that phthalo green shade or phthalo green blue shade, it's a really beautiful color. Uh, it's a little warmer than I actually expected. So it's a little more of the middle of the road. All right, so those are our swatches give them a chance to dry and I'll go ahead and read the pigments to you guys. So for Quinn Magenta, we are looking at PR 122. For Quinn Gold, we're looking at PO 48, PY 150. For Transparent Pyrrole Orange, we're looking at PO 71. For Green Gold, we're looking at PY 129. For Dioxazine Purple, we're looking at PV 23. For Cobalt Teal, we're looking at PG50. For Permanent Gamboge, we are looking at a bunch of colors. PY42, PV19, PY150. For Burnt Umber, we're looking at PBR7. For Cerulean Blue Chromium, we're looking at PB36. And I guess that's at a one ratio. For French Ultramarine Blue, we're looking at PB29. For Prussian Blue, we're looking at PB27. For Quinn Crimson, we're looking at PR122, PR206. And yeah, I thought so. Quinn Magenta has PR122 in it. For Bohemian Green Earth, 
we're looking at PBK or uh, P Black 7, PG 7, PR 101, PY 42. So that's four colored or four pigments in there. And then for Thalo Green Blue Shade, we're looking at PG 7. And these are actually kind of straddle the spectrum from series one to series four with most of mine being in two and three, although the high chroma ones are almost entirely in two or above. And the series number usually reflects how expensive those paints are. So while these dry, we are going to go ahead and start filling our half pans. You guys have seen me set up a half pan palette in the past. So you guys can click this link here or this card here if you've never seen one before. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do the high chroma ones at the top. And that leaves me with two extras because I have, um, this is a 12 color palette and we can put some in the middle. So I just need to decide what's gonna go in the middle. And that will definitely be one of my browns. And probably my Bohemian Green Earth. I think so. And this is an unusual palette for me because I have three blues. I don't normally do three blues. We have that Cerulean French Ultramarine and Prussian Blue. But what's nice about this is we've got warm blues and a cool blue. So we at least have some variety there. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna go ahead and fill my half pans and then label them using an ever so handy Sharpie marker. And I'll do one to demonstrate for you guys. And then we're gonna allow this to dry at least overnight, probably longer than that. And I'll put it on the side as well. Then I'm gonna use some double stick tape to tape my half pans into my palette. So I have double stick tape here. And not every watercolor is designed to be reconstituted from tubes. It's one of the reasons why I do these tests because I personally like to work with dried half pans for my palette. I don't like leaving paint open just because I have cats and cat hair tends to get into everything. So this helps me cut down on waste. So that might not be a system that works for you. You may not find that part relevant. But I also enjoy doing the side-by-side -side comparison tests. So I'm going to go ahead and remove that little tray. Stick my... Oh, these all need to be spread back, so... Get that real quick. And I will put a link to this little half pan palette in the description below in case you're looking for a half pan palette. So I'm gonna go ahead and fill this out and check back in with you guys. So it took some doing and I ended up having to wash my hands several times, but I got all of these half pans filled. So something that I noticed with the core watercolors, especially with the blues and the purple is they are very liquidy. They're very runny. I'm not sure if that's the Aquazole, but they were all just really kind of loose. It reminded me a lot of like the Magello watercolors. And uh, I slipped and dropped the mini palette and you guys can see there was a little bit of spillage. It wasn't too bad. Um, it definitely got all over me though. So if you are following along at home, if you're doing your own kind of custom core palette, that's just maybe something worth keeping in mind. Some colors are really, really runny. And uh, if you overfill, they can be kind of prone to spilling or slopping over. So we're gonna wanna let this dry thoroughly, uh, probably longer than just one day, probably several days. Uh, so let's go ahead then and take a look. I'll move this over to the side. We're gonna take a look at our swatches. So as I added the water and I did it kind of haphazardly, so there's some back runs, there's some cauliflowering, but the colors are fairly vibrant, fairly brilliant. Um, the purple grays out a little bit not too bad and it could definitely be this cellulose based paper. So what I'm gonna do 
is I am going to let our half pans dry out. And then I'm gonna do a comparative swatch and I'm also going to make a map for this mini palette because I set it up a little bit differently than I normally did. I did the high chroma, high chroma colors here at the top. So a lot of the quinacridones, the pyro orange, dioxine purple, cobalt teal, and the olive green up here at the top. Then burnt umber, um, bohemian green earth, the uh, new gamboge, the quin crimson, the cerulean, French ultramarine, Prussian blue, and then the phthalo green blue shade. So it's not how I would normally set up my palette, but I think it's gonna work, especially once I have a map, I think it'll be just fine. Um, this is kind of an unusual palette because this wouldn't be necessarily someone's mixing palette, but I think I'll be able to get what I want out of this palette and get the kind of mixes I want out of this palette, especially because we have some of the darker colors and we have some things to kind of neutralize those darker colors. I might not be able to get quite a black, but I think I was able to do it with the Daniel Smith, Daniel Smith Essential 6. So that could happen. Oh, oh wow. So my little Hanbei palette has already started to shear off. So I'm just gonna have to be gentle with, or it was man, wow. I think it was actually, I don't wanna tilt this palette, but it looks like there was a manufacturing defect with this one. And that's sometimes, that's sometimes what you get with um, inexpensive art supplies from China, it happens. So I will see you guys in a few days when this has had a chance to dry. And before we get too much further, I do wanna say I am aware that Core has recently released a dried half pan set. And uh, I might be preparing for that with this video. So I'm aware of it. You don't need to let me know. I've been eyeing it. I've been checking out what other people have to say about it. I am excited to see uh, what it might be like. So I'll see you guys in a few days once this has had a chance to dry. So our core watercolors have had a chance to dry fully. This is our original swatch sheet. You guys remember this. And now we're going to do our half pan swatches. So these swatches have had a couple days to dry. They're not nearly as liquidy as they were. I was having some spillage problems with them initially. So that is definitely something you're gonna wanna be aware of as you, uh, if you build a palette like this. We also have some cracking and that's really just an aesthetic thing. It's not really any real problem. So, I'm gonna swatch on the same paper. In fact, I literally just pulled this off. So we're swatching on fluid, easy block, cellulose-based watercolor paper. And then I'm gonna make a little map of these watercolors for my own reference. So we're gonna start with a mass tone. And then we're gonna do kind of a graduated swatch and so far at least, they're reconstituting beautifully. Although possibly a little darker than expected. So the top row are the high chroma colors. And since these were so liquidy, I'm not gonna pre-activate them, at least for this swatch test. We'll kind of find out from this test whether or not these are the sort of watercolors that need to be pre-activated but they seem to reconstitute really quickly. Again, kind of re reminding me of Magello Mission Gold watercolors. All right, so that about does it for our high chroma colors. They reconstituted very nice and very evenly. It was honestly a little bit easier than working from the dot swatches like we did the first go round, although the colors aren't quite as saturated, I do find the ease of use to be a big plus in their favor. So then I have burnt umber and bohemian green earth as sort of the middle of my palette. Hmm, bohemian green earth seems like one of those colors that needs some pre-activation and it's much 
greener and uh, more like a green gold than the straight from the tube swatch. So that's kind of interesting. It lost a lot of its browner notes. Now I'll go over all of these colors once I finish swatching. But I think I might prefer how they handle as half pans to how they handle from tubes, just because I, as a watercolor artist, am not really mixing up large amounts of color and I also have cats. And that always makes having open, um, undry watercolor paints a hassle for me since those get polluted really quickly. But every studio is gonna be different and it's all they're all gonna have kind of their own considerations. So what doesn't work for me might be just fine for you. Kind of skimp and save some room for the last two. And this is not a one-to-one -one color comparison with the other sheet. They're not in the same order because I kind of reorganized my collection. Okay, so from left to right, we start with the core high chroma colors. So we begin with um, quinacridone gold, Pyrrol orange, quin magenta, dioxazine violet, cobalt blue, olive green. Then we go open stock, burnt umber, bohemian green earth, new gamboge, quinacridone carmine, then um, cerulean, French ultramarine, Prussian blue, and phthalo blue green shade. So this is still drying but I will leave this right here. Again, like I said, it's not really a one-to-one -one lineup, but as you guys can probably see, the colors were much more intense when we swatched from a wet swatch, when we swatched from a wet dot. Uh, and that's to be expected, that's generally the case when working with tube watercolors. But I found that I liked the swatches a lot better from the half pans. And I found that they handled a little more consistently than from the tubes. And I will be interested to see how our mass tone swatches comparatively dry. So I will check in with you guys once this has had a chance to dry. Our swatches have finally dried. Yep. So I'm going to line up, and again, it's not gonna be a one-to-one -one lineup, unfortunately. Try to ease it on over though, because these are the high chromas, and they're a little bit backwards, I realize that. So some of them are kind of one-to-one, -one, like pyrrole orange um, is definitely kind of one-to-one. Uh, Quinn gold is pretty similar. Where and dioxine purple is good, as is cobalt turquoise or cobalt blue teal, something like that. Um, the green gold is a little lighter, and the quin magenta is a little bit lighter. For me, this isn't like significantly lighter, and I also didn't pre wet my watercolors, so that could also just be um, an activation sort of thing. Thalo blue is, or sorry, thalo green blue shade is a little bit lighter, but not significantly so. And this, again, it could be an activation sort of problem. It's the blues that are really, I think, kind of noticeable. And I'll zoom in for you guys. And I have my blues, actually, if I just reorganize a little bit, I can do a one-to-one. -one. Yeah, all right. Cerulean, Ultramarine, Prussian Blue. All three of them are a lot lighter when we're working from the dried hat pans. I do think that might differ if we give them a chance to kind of soak in some water. In fact, I may re-swatch those because they've had such a chance. Uh, burnt Umber, a little bit lighter. The Bohemian Earth is definitely, oh, let me zoom out for you guys. Sorry about that. The Bohemian Earth, the green earth is definitely greener in the dried from half pan swatch than it is directly from the tube. So depending on which sort of aspect of the color you're looking for, you might want to work from tube or you might want to work from a dried half pan. 
I actually really like that this is much greener because we have a cool blue green and now we have kind of a warmer green. Um, and it is still a little more neutral, a little more muted, but it's definitely usable. And I think I can mix the phthalo and the bohemian green earth to get kind of a nice middle of the road green. And let's see, otherwise, yeah. So New Gamboge is a little less gold, which is fine because Quinn, uh, Quinn Gold is already very gold, so I don't need two golds in a palette. And this is more of like a warm, sunny yellow, whereas this is kind of a brownish gold. So um, for me, working from, oh yeah, and then the Quinn uh, Carmine is definitely a little lighter, Again, I don't really see that as a problem. So what I'm gonna do is since this has had a chance to kind of soak up some water, is I'm gonna actually re-swatch again and see if that changed anything. And I'll do just like a little mass tone swatch here at the bottom. And then kind of try to saturate it with color so we can get as dark and as saturated a version of each color as possible. And then we actually will know whether or not working from a dried, reconstituted, ooh, there we go, see, there's the color. Just took a moment to wake up. Now the reason I didn't do this from the get-go is these core, many of my core watercolors were so liquidy when I filled these half pans. Uh, they were so wet and they were so prone to moving and spilling. I really thought that just adding water, pre-activating them before we started painting, I figured that was gonna be just really detrimental to these paints. Kind of like um, with the Holbein and the Magello paints, it just turns it into a swamp. I kind of figured it was gonna do that. but it really seems like, ooh, yeah, there we go. The cerulean is starting to move around a lot on me, but it's also much more vibrant. So that's the one I need to be careful. Or these blues were the ones that were all very wet and uh, kind of sloppy when I filled the half pans. They're just looser than some of the other watercolors. And now that they've had a chance to absorb some water, they're kind of going back to that condition. But they're also much more vibrant, so. If you're working from dried half pans, that's just something to be aware of. That's something that, oh, yep, the phthalo green is also much more vibrant. Okay, so all of these core colors that we talked about today do benefit if you're working from dried to half pans. They do benefit from you pre-activating them. However, some of the colors are going to get kind of wet and loose again. So that's just something to be aware of if you're going to, you know, pack this in a backpack or like haul it around, turn it on its side. Um, some of the colors may be prone to leaking, which is not a great thing. These from half pants in this format, um, maybe not the best for a traveling artist. Um, however, as we know, Core has recently launched a semi-moist half pan uh, watercolor set. So that might be the solution you're looking for. If you love Core watercolors, if you love these blues because they don't have that yellow gum arabic in them that might be the solution you're looking for so thank you guys so much for watching i am excited to play with these and do a field test with them and i look forward to seeing you guys again with another watercolor tutorial or review i hope you guys have a wonderful day and i hope this sort of unbox and swatch even though it wasn't really an unbox of anything answered some of your questions maybe helped you make some important decisions and maybe opened your eyes to adding some of the core colors to your watercolor collection. If you enjoyed this video, consider subscribing for more fantastic watercolor resources here on this channel. And consider heading over to netosoup.blogspot.com and check out more watercolor tutorials. If you like my watercolor art, you should check out my watercolor webcomic, 7-Inch Cara. It's free to read at 7inchcara.com or 7inchcara.tumblr.com. It was a pleasure hanging out with you guys, and I can't wait to see you guys again really soon. Have a great day, guys. Bye.